Okay, so question two says a body of mass one kilogram is tied to a string and rotates on a horizontal frictionless table. So imagine this is kind of your bird's eye view of this object here. It's going to rotate whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. Um, my radius is four centimeters, which I need to convert that into meters. So that's 0.4. And then it has a velocity of two meters per second. And the first thing it says is if the length is 40 centimeters, speed is two meters per second, find the tension in the string. So again, with this, here are the forces that are acting on this object. You have your normal force acting up, you have your force of gravity acting down, and then have, you have your tension, which is horizontal, on the table. And really, that's the only force that's acting, causing it to go into a circle. And so we don't need to worry about normal or the force of gravity, just tension. And because tension and velocity are perpendicular, we're going to call that a centripetal force. Okay, so force centripetal is my net force, and the only force that's acting in that plane is the tension, and that equals mass times my centripetal acceleration. That's then going to be converted to mv squared over r, and plug in my values, and I should get a tension of 10 newtons in my string. Part B then says, if the string breaks when the tension exceeds 20 newtons, what's the largest speed the mass can rotate at? And so my maximum force is going to be 20 newtons, and so I need to now find V. So in this case, we're going to set up this same equation here, except now we're going to know tension and we'll solve for V. So to do that, Tension equals mass times velocity squared over r. I'm going to divide each side by mass. And then I get tension divided by mass equals v squared over r. I'm going to multiply each side by r. Then I get v squared, so I need to square root both sides. And I'm just simply left with velocity equals the square root of the tension times the radius divided by my mass. And that comes out to be 2.8 meters per second. So that's how fast my object can rotate at before it breaks. Once it goes any faster, the tension is going to be greater than 20, and so that would be my breaking point. See. Lastly, last question says, the breaking tension is 20 newtons still, but now you want your mass to rotate at 4 meters per second, so now we need to change our length of the string that can be used. So again, we're going to use the same setup here, except now we're just simply going to solve for r. So you'll see we're going to find the radius with tension equal to 20 and velocity equal to 4. This basic setup, just going to do a little bit of algebra to solve for r. So I'm going to multiply each side by r, get r off the bottom. And I'm sorry, I know this v looks like and the r look the same, so I'll try to clean that up. Um, so I get tension times radius, I'm going to divide each side by tension, and I'm simply left with the radius is the mass, velocity squared divided by my tension, and that gives me a radius of about 0.8 meters. So that's the shortest it could be to be able to achieve that. It could be longer, but if it's any shorter, um, it's going to cause a tension that's too high, and it's going to break. All right, so just some good practice. Um, and again, this is my setup where tension is my centripetal force. And so then I can set it equal to mass times acceleration centripetal and just use that conversion of V squared over R um, to solve anything related with any of those variables.